Model Chrissy Teigen recently made her first public appearance since her pregnancy loss in September. You may recall how millions watched on social media as Teigen and her husband, musician John Legend, mourned the death of their son Jack, who was stillborn. It drew attention to something that we rarely talk about, but happens more often than you know. The CDC reports one in four pregnancies ends in loss every year. New Center Maine's Vivian Lee, who has experienced this same heartbreaking journey, is here with a special report tonight. Viv. Cindy, you may recall as well, my oldest son Jacob's brother, tw his twin brother rather, died 18 hours after he was born. Jared was diagnosed with a rare and very complex medical condition in the womb, and his death was beyond devastating. Now, I sat down with several families who hope by opening up about the babies they lost will bring healing and break our long-standing culture of silence. Nick and Nicole Bowie Haskell were excited about adding a baby boy to their family, which included seven-year-old Jenna and eight-year-old Jack. But a 13-week ultrasound revealed a condition called high drops, fluid built up in a baby's tissues and organs. Only half of the babies survive after birth, and the couple were advised to consider ending the pregnancy. We weren't willing to, to do that, so we, we wanted to have faith that it would be okay and, and so we went back at 18 weeks and the high drops were gone. Tests later revealed their son Charlie had Down syndrome but was developing normally. After a scan showed an enlarged liver, Nicole underwent an emergency C-section at 35 weeks. Charlie was diagnosed with a condition known as TMD. Similar to leukemia, it results in the rapid growth of abnormal white cells. Charlie was given a 30% chance of survival and underwent chemotherapy. Jack and Jenna, though, were able to see him at the hospital. But a little more than two weeks after his birth, Charlie's organs started shutting down. Family members said a heart-wrenching goodbye after deciding to take him off life support. He opened his eyes and he blinked three times and then he shut his eyes and I just knew, I just felt like I knew it was time. Every loss is different and, and we were fortunate enough to have 17 days with Charlie. Family, friends and co-workers wrapped their arms around the family. The couple attended infant and pregnancy loss support group meetings and grief counseling, but openly talking about Charlie was difficult because there's often a stigma attached to losing a baby. People just are like, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, you know, like, and it's, it, I don't want anyone to apologize to me for Charlie. You know, he was our son, he passed away. We honor him every single day. When you start talking about these things, it can start to feel isolating, um, where you, you, you don't necessarily on the same page with everyone on these subjects. And that, that's tough. It's a taboo topic, but it shouldn't be. It's, it's a loss that we've experienced, just like if, if an adult died. An unforeseen complication in the third trimester led to the loss of Butler Carmichael's son, Mitchell. Doctors said it was due to a placenta abruption when the placenta separates from the inner wall of the uterus before birth. We don't really know what caused it to happen. After a scan showed no brain activity, Mitchell lived for 27 hours. Butler's daughters Stone and Reed, just four and three at the time, were also able to spend time with Mitchell in the NICU. You hold them, you sing to them, you kiss them, um, all the things that you want to do to your new baby. Butler and Mitchell's father received incredible support from their family and their community, and they leaned on other parents who had gone through pregnancy loss to process heartbreaking and exhausting emotions. A few years later, Mitchell's memory gave Butler the courage to beat colon cancer, and Butler's family celebrates Mitchell's birthday each year to honor his life. It's, it's a child that I feel like I should be raising a little boy right now, a 16-year-old boy. At Mount Hope Cemetery in Bangor, metal butterfly plaques with names and birth dates adorn these granite pillars, a special place to remember babies that live on in the hearts of parents and loved ones. All of them have left the hospital without a baby in their arms. The memorial was created by Empty Arms of Greater Bangor, a group of dedicated volunteers who have lost babies as well. They organize funeral arrangements, hold remembrance walks for those who've experienced pregnancy and infant loss, and monthly support group meetings. It's so, so, so isolating, but we're here, and 
we just, we want to help. Amy Gerby's daughter Sophie was stillborn in the third trimester when death happens in utero. Besides Sophie, scans didn't detect in the early stages that there was also a molar pregnancy when a non-viable fertilized egg implants in the uterus but doesn't come to term. That produced very high hormones normally measured in a routine pregnancy test, which became a very toxic environment for both Amy and her unborn child. In my kidney function, liver function, blah, 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 had all... I was already shutting down. With two little girls, Erin and Megan, at home, Amy struggled to heal physically and emotionally. By chance, though, she was able to attend an empty arm support group in Western Massachusetts for parents who were also going through similar heartbreak. I could say her name and not have people be uncomfortable and running away. Amy founded the empty arm support group in Maine in 2007. Volunteers offer comfort through shared loss to parents who lose a baby at the hospital. The nonprofit puts together these comfort boxes for moms to take with them when they go home. The group also educates medical staff about learning a patient's medical history, especially if they've gone through loss beforehand. Amy then suffered two miscarriages following Sophie, but went on to have two more healthy children, Evan and Jordan. The family celebrates Sophie's birthday every year and remembers her life through random acts of kindness. Erin Hatch and her husband Scott tried to become pregnant for eight years. Their dreams came true when they found out they were expecting twin boys. But at 17 weeks, Erin's water broke. Despite being on bed rest for several weeks, she went into labor in March of 2015. It wasn't safe for them to like try and stop the labor or anything like that. And it was just too early at 20 weeks. Severely premature, Mason and Marshall only live for minutes, but the couple were able to spend time with their babies. Put little hats on them and wrap them up in little blankets. They received amazing support and love from family and friends, but it took time to process their grief. And talking about the babies they lost was often uncomfortable. When I would bring up anything about my experience, I felt like I was ruining someone's day. Following another loss, a miscarriage, a mom they didn't know heard about what happened to their twins and signed over her parental rights of a baby boy with Down syndrome. Maddox was later joined several years later by a baby sister, Madeline, whose birth happened through embryo adoption. Erin carried her daughter to term, but the pregnancy was beyond stressful. That was a, that was difficult for us too, because we were very worried about you know, is this even possible? I'd not have a successful pregnancy. In between, Erin had started attending Empty Arms of Greater Bangor support group meetings, a safe place to share her emotions with other moms and to feel that she wasn't alone. She started volunteering to meet with parents at the hospital after they lost a baby, providing comfort boxes to casting hands and feet for precious keepsakes of their baby's life. It should be really difficult to go in and you know, hold somebody's baby who's passed away. And, but I feel really honored to be a part of the journey of that family. Erin is now the president of the nonprofit, which raised $15,000 this year. The funds go to comfort boxes, book library, butterfly scholarship program, family trainings, education, and awareness. Because of the pandemic, support group meetings are virtual and open to parents across Maine as a resource for healing and connection a bond that Erin relies on, especially during the moments of pain and longing for her twins who would have started school this fall. All the things I'm missing out on with going back to school and um, and then I say that in support group and everyone's like, oh my gosh, yes. Like five was really tough for me too. I know Charlie was, was given to us for a reason. As for Nick and Nicole, eight years later, the couple now has two more boys, Henry and Hudson. The family also takes trips during the holidays around the time when Charlie was born and left this earth. Another key part of their healing journey, talking about the baby they lost too soon. And we have three children and, and that was a huge step in shaping the loss is, is it, it counts and it, and, it, and it matters. And, um, you know, now we're saying we have five, five, <laughs> five children. Now, Charlie's family tells me research on their son's death helped doctors save the life of another baby with that same rare medical condition.